Welcome, everybody. My name is Alektina Larionova. The Russian International Affairs Council continues its online discussion on COVID-19 situations in different countries. Uh, and today we'll talk about uh, anti-coronavirus measures in Japan. Uh, here with us, Senior Research Fellow of the Sasakawa Peace Foundation, Taisuke Aberu. Hello. Uh, uh, and uh, Associate Professor uh, at Mgimo University Moscow and Research Fellow of the Institute of Oriental Study, uh, Russian Academy of Sciences, Vladimir Nilidov. Hello. Uh, as you know, last week, uh, a month-long state of emergency was declared in seven Japanese prefectures, including Tokyo. Uh, and it was quite surprising for us, as we already saw Japan, among other Asian countries, who successfully went through the first, and we hope the last, stage of this pandemic with rather low number of infections. And Mr. Abiru, um, what yes. do these measures? And um, after almost one week, how does the uh, population perceive the situation? Um, um, are these measures effective? And how do you see the development of these events in the nearest future? Uh, you know, the, uh, we have uh, just one week experienced the, this uh, state of emergency, but actually compared with the uh, other countries, including China, U.S., and Europe. Uh, the measures, uh, Japanese, uh, Japanese government and uh, Tokyo Metropolitan uh, government has taken is much milder than the measures that other countries has taken. So uh, we, uh, they have asked uh, several, uh, uh, you know, the uh, restaurants, uh, bars, and uh, you know, the, you, you don't know about the pachinko parrots. They, this is kind of the gamble uh, place to close the, the, the business, uh, uh, tentatively, of course. Uh, mm, mm, yeah, also, but uh, they have not asked, uh, uh, for example, uh, restaurants to completely cruise, cross, but they just asked, asked to uh, open the restaurant until the 8 o'clock, uh, 8 p.m. But they, they can serve the alcohol only uh, until 7 p.m. Uh, like this kind of uh, measures. Uh, uh, also, uh, here's as a characteristics of the Japanese measures. Uh, because that Japanese government, central government, has not promised to compensate uh, the the loss that in the the business incurred by the closing their restaurants and so on, uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, Japanese uh, there is no penalty. Even they breach, uh, uh, they don't you know. Uh, so uh, people uh, don't uh, have to the, obey this rule. Y yes, they, 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 this is just request from the uh, government and, uh, you know, the uh, metropolitan, Tokyo metropolitan uh, government. So this is not kind of the, this is not, not like the uh, lockdown situation such as we have seen in New York, and uh, as a uh, European countries, so in, so we have not actually uh, exact numbers uh, on which we can say that how how effective uh, you know the uh, these measures uh, are has been uh, so far. Uh, 
but there's a concern that uh, you know the uh, there's a limit uh, and uh, this kind of you know the milder uh, measures which Japan's government has taken and and let me explain that the uh, why Japanese uh, government uh, changed the tactics to deal with the uh, this coronavirus uh, issue before uh, the uh, the uh, announcement of the uh, state of emergency uh, Japan's government has taken the uh, basically uh, uh, the strategy what is called the uh, cluster containment strategy that means that uh, identify those infected area early on and find out who had contact with them then contain these clusters and prevent the uh, spread of the uh, uh, you know uh, coronavirus to the the japanese uh, societies and uh, until the middle of the march actually uh, we have it is fair to say that we have uh, succeeded in containing the uh, the coronavirus spread of the coronavirus uh, but after middle of the uh, march we have witnessed the increasing number of the what is called you know the uh, community transmission of the uh, coronavirus this uh, community transmission of coronavirus means that uh, you know we cannot trace uh, where infected get this virus. So, so the situation that we cannot find the uh, you know the uh, uh, clusters. So. So we, since the uh, middle of the March, we have increased, we have witnessed an increased number of the, uh, uh, the case of the uh, community transmission of coronavirus. And so uh, there's a serious warning from the, uh, you know, the society of the Japanese medical society that uh, if, unless we take more, uh, harsh measure to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. We will follow the case of the, like, New York. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, Japan's government decided, finally decided to announce the, uh, the state of the emergency. But as I mentioned, these measures are much milder than the measures that other countries like the United States and the Euro as the European countries has taken. Uh, and now the state of emergency will last until May 6th, yes? Yes, so far, yes. So far, yes. Uh, and as I know, some other prefectures want to join the state of emergency. For example, yes. uh, Aichi Prefecture. So, mm -hmm. uh, do you think that these measures will be expanded in the near in the near future? I think so, but uh, so far, Japanese government uh, say that uh, they don't think that they, they they don't see the necessity to include Aichi Prefecture. But uh, Aichi Pre Pre Prefecture announced uh, declared by themselves the state of emergency. Uh, so, uh, I don't know what could, what kind of effect the, their own declaration will have, but uh, well, it is highly likely that the, uh, the in the in the new future the uh, the prefecture of the uh, state of Ibanjishi 
he will be expanded by the uh, Japanese government. I see. Uh, Vladimir, uh, don't you think that this situation uh, in Japan somehow can be compared to uh, the Russian variant? Because uh, in both Japan and Russia, we have relatively low number of cases, uh, and, but at the same time, there is a growing alarm uh, over young people and uh, mm -hmm. increase of inf infections in, uh, among young people and especially in urban areas? Well, I think it's definitely useful to compare the Japanese response with response uh, with that uh, response in Russia as well as in other countries. And I guess that um, it would be fair to say that uh, the Japanese response is a sort of like middle of the road strategy. Uh, it's, um, it's definitely much milder than that in Russia. And it's definitely much milder than that in um, some European countries, uh, which actually were hardest hit uh, by the virus early on, well, not counting China, of course. Um, I think, um, but it, it's also definitely, it's going towards, uh, it's becoming increasingly strict and strict, uh, stricter and stricter. Um, compared to Russia, um, well, um, as Mr. Abiru uh, rightly said, um, there are um, definitely much fewer powers of the authorities to limit uh, the context. So for instance, um, because of the state of emergency, and now the authorities uh, gain, uh, got the right to, uh, to find the companies that are unwilling to provide medical supplies. And uh, there is also, I guess, the provision that they can appropriate uh, land and real estate for use for medical, um, uh, temporary medical facilities should that need arise. Uh, but uh, they cannot uh, prohibit uh, private citizens from traveling. Uh, they, cannot, uh, they cannot even prohibit uh, public gatherings. They can only issue strict recommendations and they cannot even uh, force uh, schools to close because uh, technically and legally uh, the schools are under the authority of local boards of education which are indep independent uh, from the government. So um, I, I think that uh, what we see here is uh, like, a, 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 it's not exactly even a lockdown. It's a much milder version of the measures that are being taken in, uh, in Russia and that are being taken in uh, some other European countries and in the United States and definitely much milder than what was taken in China. Uh, of course, there is no comparison, uh, but um, well, I, I think that on the one hand, because uh, Japan seems to be uh, somewhat behind, uh, for instance, European countries. Uh, we'll, still, we'll still have to see uh, how the situation develops in the future because, well, as everybody knows, the situation is changing daily. Uh, but I think that uh, even, well, God forbid, of course, uh, should the worst happen and should uh, Japan experience a kind of exponential growth um, that, for instance, Italy or Spain experienced, I, I, I think that due to the peculiarities of the political system and the, of the social system, I, I think it will be very difficult legally and politically to introduce that kind of a strict lockdown. But I, again, I hope that it will not be necessary um, in Japan because it seems like uh, the statistics are in Japan's favor that up, up until now they have managed, if not to contain, but at least uh, to, as everybody says, to flatten the curve somewhat. Okay, I see. Uh, Mr. Abreu, uh, you've already yes. touched upon uh, the economic dimension of this situation. And as I know, uh, Prime Minister Abe announced uh, a one trillion dollar stimulus package for, uh, mm -hmm. to protect businesses and jobs. And do you think it's enough? Or do you, don't you think that it could even worsen the situation with the country's economy at this stage? You know, the, uh, we cannot predict what will happen in the future on this issue. And uh, so far, you know, the, but, uh, the number of the uh, econ economic package uh, Japanese government announced is uh, some sort of the kind of the uh, decorated number. Uh, uh, adding some kind of the uh, the other you know 
numbers which have taken even without the uh, the outbreak of the coronavirus. So, uh, also there's a serious criticism within the uh, Japanese society that you know uh, Japanese government uh, announced to uh, you know to provide the provide uh, the almost about uh, 3,700 uh, 3, dollars to each household, mm -hmm. which have, which have uh, seen serious drop in the income, for example. Uh, but the, the criteria uh, on which uh, they can receive the uh, uh, this uh, money is very hard to the career. So, uh, yeah. On the other hand, the Japanese government announced to create the create the uh, the system of the. Uh, uh, the system to provide the free loan, uh, free interest loan to the uh, uh, small and medium companies uh, by the by private uh, banks. Uh, before that, uh, only the uh, uh, state uh, financial institution can provide such kind of the loan, but uh, they have. Uh, it is very difficult to get uh, this money because of the very complicated procedure to of the uh, uh, so uh, I hope that uh, the small and uh, medium company could get the free interest from from the uh, uh, you know the for Japanese government much uh, easier and uh, you know this is kind of the uh, limited measure for those who suffered seriously from the uh, the outbreak of this coronavirus but you know uh, I think we have to expect that uh, after uh you know the uh you know small and business uh, small and uh, medium uh, companies we have to uh, face the more severe economic situation for the big big major big companies then we 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 will have to consider uh, uh additional measure to to the you know the uh, stabilized economic situation, but we have not seen, we have not reached that point yet. I think. But does uh, Japan uh, have uh, uh, this um, opportunity to use these funds? Because, as we know, J Japan now is a state of recession for a long mm -hmm. period of time. And what do you think? If if there is enough uh, capacity. You know that's why that's why you know uh, one of, that's one of the reasons that the Prime Minister Abe tried to avoid uh, you know the uh, harsh measure and uh, take the as Nerido Sam mentioned take the middle course on the one hand uh, not not to seriously damage the Japanese economy but also uh, to uh, prevent the spread of the coronavirus as much as possible. So, you know, the, uh, anyway, mm, Japanese economy will enter the process of recession. Even deeper. Yeah. Even deeper yeah. than now. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, and Vladimir, uh, you've mentioned this like uh, political dimension and you as an expert in uh, political system of Japan and internal policy uh, what do you think how these measures like half measures will uh, affect Abe's position as a prime minister 
Well, on the one hand, um, the main selling point of Abe's administration up to now has been um, Abenomics. Uh, so basically, a set of policy measures or economic policy measures aimed at revitalizing the national economy. And well, definitely in the situation that we are finding ourselves now, all of the achievements of that Abenomics have been completely wiped out because Japan is going, as Abiro-san uh, has mentioned, is going to enter a deep recession. Uh, but on the other hand, um, another major policy point of um, Abe's administration um, has been constitutional reform. And one of the suggestions for the constitutional reform was to introduce some, um, some possible provisions concerning uh, the state of emergency. So uh, additional, to give the government additional powers uh, in case of a, a state of emergency, uh, well, at that point, nobody was expecting, of course, that somebody like this would happen. Uh, but I think that uh, it would definitely justify uh, uh, this, uh, these expectations and these measures that were being discussed. Of course, they were not introduced and uh, um, constitutional reform never happened. Uh, but I think that it sort of like vindicates Abe's vision. Uh, all in all, I think that um, well, definitely everything depends on the eventual development of the situation in the coming weeks and in the coming months. Uh, but I think that, uh, well, and of course there is criticism of Abe's uh, policies uh, within the country that uh, somebody, somebody's criticizing, as uh, Mr. Abiru said, uh, the complicated process involved in uh, receiving the economic compensations and uh, somebody's criticizing the tone um, uh, of Abe's uh, statements. Uh, but I think that uh, if everything goes well, uh, then it probably people will um, evaluate uh, the response of the government as an effective one. And then probably it will uh, strengthen the positions of Abbas cabinet, or at least uh, strengthen the position of the uh, Liberal Democratic Party. I think another thing, uh, an, an, another example to compare it with uh, is the 2011 uh, crisis uh, with the Great East Japan earthquake and uh, tsunami and the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster, nuclear power plant disaster. And um, Abe, uh, Shinzo Abe himself and politicians from the ruling Liberal Democratic Party at several points uh, actually mentioned that situation uh, were uh, a different party, the a Democratic Party of Japan uh, was in power as an example of, an, of a very inefficient response. Um, and I, I, I think that if, uh, if, again, provided that the statistics work in their favor, uh, I think that they will be eventually, if the pandemic does not really hit Japan that hard, uh, they will be able to compare this situation with the situation in 2011 and uh, say to the people, just a look, uh, of course, not everything was perfect, but at least we did better than the Democratic Party of Japan. Uh, so I, I, I think it will not lead to the collapse of the LDP administration. And uh, I think that uh, it might eventually even strengthen their political positions, uh, at least of the party in general. And also, well, as for Abe, his term is due to end in 2021, um, of course. Uh, but again, um, if the situation works in his favor, he will probably uh, be able to sort of like name his successor or at least um, uh, to go in history as a leader who successfully tackled the situation. But uh, this, this will happen if only these measures work. Only if these measures work, of course. Yeah, I see. And I would like uh, you both like, uh, to somehow look at this situation from another angle and think that now more and more Japanese uh, employers uh, are introducing teleworking. Mm -hmm. And for Japan, with its uh, commuting every day in crowded trains uh, and uh, with its problem of overtime work at the office, maybe this situation could somehow help uh, to change Japanese corporative culture. Mr. Abiru, what do you think? Yes, uh, you know, the uh, 
coronavirus outbreak, the the the, the crisis of the coronavirus, uh, actually uh, urged us to uh, move to the uh, more, uh, you know, uh, social distance. Take the, to take the social distance, and uh, you know, there's a very a great number of the companies which uh, has to to introduce the uh, teleworks. Uh, uh, you know, I also spend uh, almost more than one month uh, in my house. Uh, up without... to this point. So yes, now you're yes. working from home. Yes, yes. So uh, uh, I think that, but on the other hand, uh, there are uh, s small and uh, medium companies that they cannot they cannot afford to introduce these uh, you know uh, systems due to lack of fund or lack of the uh, experts. So uh, we have witnessed uh, still. Uh, many Japanese businessmen uh, working in their office. Of course, we have witnessed the, the decreasing number of the uh, uh, people uh, who take the trains to, to the office, but still uh, we have witnessed the uh, enough people in in the uh, in the train especially uh, in the morning and in the evening but uh, if there are any support from the government to promote this teleworking especially for small and medium enterprises so far so far no support from the the Japanese government they just urged they just recommend but no uh, substantial support, actual support, like you know, uh, financial support or technical support from the no, there's no support from the Spanish government so far. Vladimir, don't you think it like looks like the situation in Russia? We too, like, well, yeah, <laughs> we're asked um, to work from home to work remotely, but. Yeah, well, it's also, well, we, we, as for Russia, well, it definitely depends on the company and it def definitely depends on your enterprise, but very often it's like everybody's for your, for himself. Um, as for Japan, um, I think I need to make a small clarification for our audience uh, that um, despite the popular image of Japan as a, as a very developed and a high tech country, uh, which is definitely true in many respects. Uh, Japanese corporate culture is notoriously conservative and sometimes even walk backwards. So for instance, uh, Japanese companies are often uh, the butt of the joke because uh, they still use fax machines and many actually do use fax machines. And in Japanese companies, you often um, need, in Japanese business in general, you often need uh, for documents and contracts, um, a personal stamp called Hanko. Uh, and without it, you cannot clear a deal. Uh, so it's always like in place of a signature. Um, naturally, there are developments um, to get rid of that. And uh, there were developments to, uh, to modernize the business environment even before the pandemic. Uh, but, uh, well, all in all, um, especially in recent decades, uh, Japanese, uh, comp many Japanese companies, not all of them, of course, there are very, like, innovative ones, but many Japanese companies uh, were seen increasingly as uh, conservative, rigid, and uh, unwilling uh, to accept many, or less willing to accept many innovations than, uh, say, Western companies or, say, Chinese companies. Uh, or companies from some other Asian countries. Uh, I think that um, this situation will definitely change it. Uh, because, um, well, uh, here, um, 
if I'm permitted to dwell a little bit into sort of like philosophy of history, um, in its um, in its history, Japan experienced this kind of shocks at several points, uh, where it was uh, just forced to modernize, um, forced to uh, forced to overcome its rigidity and instead to become as innovative as possible. Uh, well, the first such shock, uh, well, there there were many, but uh, recently that was the opening of Japan in late 19th century, in, in mid 19th century. It was the defeat in World War II and uh, the occupation. And also, I think more recently, it was uh, the 1971 uh, oil crisis, uh, which actually forced Japan to adopt um, high-tech industry as the backbone of its, um, of its economy. Uh, I, I think that probably uh, the situation we're witnessing now will become another same kind of shock uh, that will force Japanese companies to innovate, that will force them to finally, I guess, uh, make it unnecessary to use Hanko for every transaction. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yes, and th that will actually uh, force them uh, to change the corporate culture where you have to be in the office, uh, even if you are not really doing anything productive. Uh, just because your boss is uh, uh, in the office and uh, we're basically the more time you spend in the office the more the more the better a worker you are uh, so um, as for government support uh, that you've asked about uh, on the one hand uh, I think now it's uh, well just due to the nature of the uh, of teleworking uh, I, I, I'm not even sure that government support is actually necessary. Uh, it's not like uh, there is some platform or website that the government might quickly build and tell everybody to use that uh, because there are such attempts in other countries as well, but it never works. Everybody is using um, well the platforms that are more fitting for them because we're using Zoom, right? Uh, <laughs> but um, on the other hand, uh, some measures have already been taken and were already taken before the pandemic. So for instance, um, uh, the introduction of 5G uh, cell network uh, is being conducted in Japan at a, at a good pace. And I think that uh, before the pandemic, there was news that uh, that they were expecting to build, uh, to basically to reach complete coverage by, if I'm not mistaken, 2021 or about that time. And uh, I think that from that point of view, uh, because the government emphasized the development of uh, 5G cell phone networks, uh, I, ca I can say that uh, that that was a wise choice because definitely it, it will be necessary for teleworking. Yeah. So I, I, I think again, um, er, er, not everything is perfect, uh, but um, well, the policies that have already been taken are paying off now at least some of them. Okay, I see. So it's like in a Japanese proverb that uh, evil will do like better. Yeah. Like. yeah, yeah. Okay, and speaking about some like uh, positive, if we can so, moments of this pandemic, uh, uh, don't you think that um, in some cases uh, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic unites international community and some, sometimes even improve relations between nations. For example, Japan sent its uh, aid supply to China during um, its outbreak uh, of uh, coronavirus in February, and it was uh, positively perceived in China. Uh, so maybe, don't you think that it could improve uh, relations between, for example, China and Japan, but at the same time, again, due to this pandemic, some state visits uh, have been postponed. For example, Xi Jinping's uh, visit to Japan. And uh, I don't think that Prime Minister Abe will be able to join President Putin during the Victory Day parade. And I'm not sure that actually this uh, parade will take place in Moscow. So uh, what do you think about the influence of this pandemic on international relations and on particularly on relations between uh, China, uh, Japan, or Japan-Russia. Mr. Uh, Abdo, yes. as a... Yeah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, you know, the, uh, even uh, 
before the uh, coronavirus outbreak with coronavirus, we have witnessed the uh, uh, you know, uh, serious uh, competition of the world readership between the uh, United States and China, especially in the area of the you know, high tech and uh, economy. And uh, after the out of coronavirus, uh, this uh, competition has been intensified, not uh, not uh, softened. So we are closely watching what will happen between the, the what what kind of relationship, uh, you know. Uh, United States and China will have uh, due to the outbreak of the coronavirus. You know, uh, uh, if the United States and China's uh, rivalry, liberty will uh, will be intensified. Uh, more than uh, that, that we have seen before uh, the, the outbreak of the virus, Japan will be situated more, uh, Japan will have the, seen the more difficult situation between United States and China especially the area area of the uh, you know the security so oh, so far we have not seen that uh, the, the the you know competition uh, over world leadership between the china and the united states uh, has been softened but even we have seen the even intensified. Uh, so, oh, of course, the Japanese government try to uh, have the good relationship not only with the United States but also with China, especially in the area of economy. No, that security, the sphere of security is uh, different. We have the different situation, but uh, in terms of the economy, uh, Japanese government want to have the good relationship with China, but you know, mm, it, so far uh, we don't know what will happen between you know the between the relation, what what kind of relationship. Uh, will you know United States and uh, uh, China will have uh, due to the the outbreak of coronavirus? So we we will uh, you know the, we have of course the priority of the relationship with is with United States. So we will closely watch the development of the situation so far. I think. Yeah, but like we cannot but agree that uh, to some extent the situation improves like um, uh, relations between Japan and China, like maybe people to people uh, contacts or maybe like public diplomacy, maybe images mm -hmm. of both countries. Mm -hmm. So as an expert like in, in China-Japan relations, mm -hmm. what do you think about this dimension? Because Japan and China have a, like a difficult story of bilateral relations. Mm -hmm. So maybe it will improve image of each country in China mm -hmm. and in Japan, respectively. Right. I mean, what, what kind of image uh, is Japanese people? Does Japanese, uh, do Japanese people have on China after the outbreak, outbreak of coronavirus? Uh, I mean but, more about uh, what what the uh, Chinese people 
what image the Chinese people uh, have about Japan. But after mm-hmm. this aid, aid supply, like, I'm sure that more and more people will, will appreciate this help from Japan. It's like hand of help. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yes, you know the uh, especially you know the uh, there's the issue of the uh, uh, shortage of the masks. We have also the shortage of we have also also shortage of masks in Japan. So now it the the uh, I think the only only country China is the only country that uh, produce the enough number of the masks for not only for its own country but for the uh, other countries so uh, we we are happy to uh, cooperation with china on this area of course in this regard you know uh, so far uh, what China is doing, uh, you know, on the uh, coronavirus issue, it could have a very positive impact on the the image of the Japanese people on China. But, but you know, the, there's as a uh, dimension of the Russia China uh, Japan China relations, of course. Uh, especially on the securities area. So uh, I don't see any uh, prospect that uh, the even even you know the Xi Jinping visit Japan in the near future. The situation over, you know, this this security issue between Japan and China. Uh, will have the uh, uh, you know the positive development. So you don't think that it, it it will improve significantly in the nearest future, like, and of course we should bear in mind this security dimension. I yes, yes, of course, of course. Vladimir, you know, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Please. Yeah, please continue, please, please. Yeah, of course the uh, you know. Japan have to handle the relations with with China very carefully. Uh, we we don't have we don't we don't want to have the you know uh, bad relations with but relationship with China. We 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 want to have the good relationship, positive development in those China relations, uh, Japan China relations, but. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, coronavirus uh, outbreak and the coronavirus issue could have a good impact on the uh, Japan Russia bilateral relations. Uh, but you know, the uh, due to the the uh, outstanding issue over uh, security dimension. Uh, you know, the uh, I don't expect that uh, dramatical, uh, you know, improvement of bilateral relations between Japan and China. There is a fundamental outstanding issue between us. I see. see. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Vladimir, what do you think on this like, international dimension of this pandemic? Well, I believe that in the in the short term, um, immediately after the pandemic, the countries will be just licking their wounds, so to speak, economically, because there is definitely going to be a global recession, a global economic crisis caused by the breakdown of logistic um, chains. Um, so I believe that um, what we should be discussing already now is uh, more like a long-term change in the balance of power globally. And uh, here I fully agree with Mr. Abiru that uh, the most important point is um, the influence of the situation on the uh, respective uh, positions of China and the United States in the world system and their relations. 
because um, on the one hand, uh, well, um, because uh, China was most um, efficient in tackling this situation, uh, well, taking into consideration all the criticism that uh, was uh, said and that is being said about the slow initial response and uh, probably some excessively strict measures, but nevertheless, if there is no second wave, then we can say that China won this battle. But as for America, um, what was already um, seen uh, in American foreign policy in recent years, uh, especially since um, Donald Trump uh, came to power, it's kind of, um, well, at first uh, it was seen as uh, isolationism, but then, uh, and especially now, it's seen as a kind of national egoism, egotism, uh, this kind of an attitude that is shown in uh, the United States intercepting uh, supplies, medical supplies headed to other countries, uh, the United St States trying to buy out a company, a German company uh, that was producing a cure for a vaccine for uh, COVID-19. Uh, this kind of an attitude that is, uh, it, there is a Russian expression that, uh, that is, what is mine is mine and what is yours is mine. Uh, and I, I think this kind of an um, um, foreign policy attitude of the United States is becoming increasingly clear. And if it goes on, uh, and especially if it is more exacerbated by the, um, by the ineffective and difficult, um, uh, ineffective response and difficult situation with the pandemic in the United States, uh, it can lead uh, to, uh, to a significant decrease of moral authority of the United States worldwide. Uh, so uh, yeah, it it will contribute, I, I guess, to the to the decline of the uh, of the power of the United States. And here we have uh, a very dangerous situation because um, on the one hand, what we are already witnessing in the United States is uh, trying to put the blame on China. Um, um, on, on the other hand, what what was seen in history at multiple times was was when there was an emerging power, emerging hegemon and a declining hegemon, uh, then there is a very high probability of a conflict between this emerging power, global power and declining global power. Um, and I, I, I think the current situation that is um, exacerbating and uh, speeding, speeding up uh, this decline of the United States and the emergence of China uh, makes this conflict ever so likely. Um, I, I think this is the main danger that after the pandemic, uh, that first the United States will try to to sort of uh, to make China pay for it, as uh, as is already being said uh, in America. And second, that uh, they will see this as a last chance to, to like to cut down China, and that they will probably be more likely to provoke some kind of a conflict, maybe. Even, um, political armed, who knows, conflict. Um, and uh, I, I think that, yes, uh, Japan definitely finds itself in a very difficult situation as a, as a faithful ally of the United States, uh, then it will be a very difficult and a very dangerous situation. But again, um, there, is a, there is a popular view of uh, Japan, especially in Russian policy, academic and media circles, as a country fully dependent on the United States, and sometimes people call it like a satellite of the United States. But um, I, um, well, uh, as a person studying Jap Japanese foreign policy and Japanese security policy, I, I, I'm absolutely certain that is not that is not the whole picture, and that is a serious distortion. Japan has much more independence and independent thinking about uh, security issues, and I think that uh, the current the current trends that Mr. Abido mentioned about uh, the possibility of increased cooperation uh, between China and Japan, even uh, in this situation. Uh, I, I think it confirms this uh, significant degree of independence and independent thinking of Japan. And I, I think that even despite the growing tensions between uh, the very, uh, the tensions that are very likely to grow uh, in the coming months and in the coming years between the United States and China, I think that uh, Japan will increasingly sort of like gravitate towards, uh, if not towards China, but towards a more independent position and towards a more pragmatic approach to China. I see. Uh, Mr. Abradu has something to yes. add or to comment. 
Yes, uh, I I agree with the Nedosan that uh, we will see the more harsh competition between the United States and China uh, in this region. I mean, the, in the Asian Pacific region or in the Pacific region uh, uh, after the the coronavirus. Uh, so. Japan also have to prepare for the uh, this development of the uh, situations. Uh, how to deal with the uh, you know the China and uh, the this has competition with United States, especially on the economic area. You know the Japanese trade is. Uh, between China is more than that between Japan and the United States now, as you know. So we will have to deal with this issue anyway. And also, we also have to uh, think about the uh, uh, Russia's relations. Uh, uh, Japan-Russia relations in the context of this more complex uh, geopolitical, geopolitical situation in this region. So, uh, as far as I understand, uh, unfortunately, uh, Prime Minister Abe cannot attend the uh, uh, ceremony in May. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that uh, Prime Minister Abe will try to uh, develop a more constructive uh, relations with uh, Russia in the context of the, this more complex job situation. So you think that this like track of uh, improving relations with Russia uh, mm -hmm. So it will be preserved until you know, 2021, you know, at least. I think that the, uh, Prime Minister Abe or Abe administration try to continue the the policy, uh, uh, the current policy to Russia. But uh, another question is that uh, how much? Uh, you know, administration uh, keep their pol political, you know, power to continue their current policy. This uh, without the uh, without the uh, you know the uh, uh, clear uh, result, tangible result of the uh, you know pistolet issue. This is another issue, but they, and this is kind of challenge that uh, admin, admin, administration will tackle, have to tackle in the uh, next uh, one and uh, five months, one year and five months. Yes. I see. Yeah. So we need time to prepare. <laughs> to, yeah. So. Mm, and now I think we should like draw a line under our mm -hmm. discussion. Mr. Abiru, Vladimir, thank you very much for joining thank us today. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you. Goodbye, everyone, you. and please stay safe. Thank, thank you. you. You too. You too. Yeah.